Hi developers, I'm Hossam Delay, Microsoft MVP. In this video, we'll learn how to create expandable items in a list view in Xamarin Forms application. Here we do have a demo of the application, a list view in which we do have items that even we want to show or to hide once the user clicks that item. If the user click another item, then we'll go and show the item for the new product and hide the one for the old product. And now if the user clicks on the same item twice, then that item will be shown and then it will be hidden. Let's learn how to develop such an application in Xamarin Forms with Visual Studio. From Visual Studio, I have created a new Xamarin Forms application by going to cross-platform and select cross-platform app then to this app generated here by Visual Studio I have added a main view model and my product model if we take a look at our main view model it's a simple view model that have an observable collection of product and inside the constructor I add some data to my products property so here I'm adding those three products what a product is so a product is a model that contains only one property which is the title of my product we want to use this view model from our view for that if we go to our main page our view then you can see that here i am binding my view to my main view model using binding context with that way now if i create my list view then i can bind the item source of my list view to my products property make sure here you have has uneven rows set to be true inside the data template i added a label to display the title of my product then i have a button that i might want to show or hide this button contains a text for details and uh, this button have always its property is visible to false but i want if i click on an item on my list view i click on the product then this button will be shown so how to do that let's first create um, the binding for our is visible property so let's say that we want to change the visibility of our button depending on a binding property. So let's define that here. For that, let's get rid of uh, false and use binding. Here I want to bind to a property. Let's create that property inside the product model because here I'm inside the context of a product. So let's add a property right here and we call it is visible for example it should be of type boolean so here i'm adding a property to to be used or to be to serve me only on my view for that if you don't want to add views properties to your models then maybe you might think about using a view model where you put your product and you add uh, your is visible property so this is the property that will say if that button will be shown or not so let's bind to that now my button its visibility is set to the is visibility is visible coming from my product cool now if is visible is set to true then this button will be shown and will set that property from our products property coming from our main view model so every product from here have its is visible property set to false so it's by default false so we don't need to add that to our three products but now if i change this to be true then i want my button to be shown how to do that i want to trigger the item tapped event handler so that i can uh, detect if my user clicked on one of those uh, products so let's create an event handler that's it and now i want to call my view model for that 
I will retrieve my view model as here I have uh, did by uh, binding context to my main view model so I can retrieve it from code behind because the binding context property has my main view model so let's say let's take that binding context then convert it to main view model so this is my main view model now I say vm dot hide or show product I create this method in order to change the is visible is visible property so to this method I'll pass my product the selected product so how can I get that selected product it's easy I go just declare a product and they can retrieve the selected product from my item template because each uh, item is bound to a product from this list of products so I can retrieve that from e dot item and you see that item here is of type object so I need to convert it to a product so this is the product that I have uh, clicked on now I'll go and generate this method that doesn't exist yet so I'll use resharper here to generate that method it takes a parameter of type product and now this method what it will do it will change the is visible to be true for this selected product this means it will go to my product and say is visible equal to a true cool but this is not enough in order to update the database or to update the view actually <laughs> because here um, our view the, all the items are bound to products so I need to update my products property in order for my list view to be updated with the new values of products property to do that I will go and remove and add the same product from my products property with that way I can update its um, bound property from my page so I say right here that I want to uh, let's do that in a, a separate method update products let's call it we'll pass again our product and we'll call this method that will uh, update our products what we'll do we'll call the products property then say remove should be products dot remove and we'll remove our product then we'll insert it again let's say again products dot add and we'll add that a uh, product but doing this if uh, my product is uh, the second one on the list if I remove it and I add it again that then it will be added to the as the list as the last item in my list view if I have three items right uh, like here if I delete this one then I add it again then it will be added after x1 carbon I don't want that instead I want to insert it into a definite position that is the index so let's create the index and the index here uh, should be the index of my product inside the products property so we can get that index by calling products dot index index of and then say I want to pass the index of my uh, product but right here this code will generate an error because we have removed it, that product from the products property then it doesn't exist so I cannot get its index instead I'll get the index before removing it from my products let's call this one index then we pass index right here 
cool so this is all the code required to update our uh, products property let's click on the surface laptop for example here i get the button details shown inside this item if i click again on surface book and here it is cool now what's if i want to hide this button again i want if i click again on the same item then i want to hide that item how to do that in code i go back here to visual studio and in order to be able to hide that item then we need to get its reference we need to know if that item is open or we need to know which is the last item that we uh, tap it on for that we need a property call it old product so let's call our old product and let's pass to it our product so that I, we can uh, get the history of the last selected product let's create this field or old product here using the sharper will generate that for me private product old product cool so I get that all the product now I'll go and change radically uh, what I have done here so let's use some snippets I have prepared that and now my, the new code should be like this the method hide or show product now what it will do it will verify if my old product is the same as the new product the previous product is the same one that I have clicked so it means I have clicked on the same item twice in that case if the item is shown then we'll go and hide it and vice versa else then we go and verify if all the product is not null in this case we'll go and hide the previous selected item so that if I, I select uh, product one then the button will be shown then if I go and select product two then its button will be shown and the button from item one will be hidden so that's the goal of this one right here we hide the previous um, old button then we show the new button cool let's try this on iPhone let's click on surface laptop click it again and here it it will be hidden once clicked twice if I click another item then the previous one will be hidden automatically for me I hope this uh, video was helpful for you and if you are looking for the source code of this uh, demo today then you can go to my GitHub account right here, Hussein Delay slash, and look for the project called Expandable List View. And from here, you will get all the source code for the today's uh, demo. So, thank you for watching.